Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Shortcut, by John Pollock. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Analogies are powerful and persuasive tools of communication. They can deceive us, or lead us to the right conclusions. Shortcut is all about how analogies work, how to use them effectively and how to differentiate between the good and bad. Key idea number one, analogies can spark creativity. You surely know the history of the contemporary assembly line, where an unfinished product passes along a line of workers who repeat the same activity. It's known Ford invented it. You may not know how Ford did this. Analogy influenced the assembly line. Analogies compare unconnected items. It clarifies words. Analogies occur daily. We compare nails on a chalkboard to irritating sounds. We can compare a group of noisy or destructive humans to wolves or other animals. How does this relate to assembly line invention? An analogy can spark invention. In 1913, Ford engineer Bill Klon toured a Chicago butcher, which inspired the assembly line. He saw how trolleys moved animals through the slaughtering process. His company made autos like this. Before the assembly line, each worker assembled all their parts, which was inefficient. Klon imagined workers approaching cars like butchers approach meat. It worked well. Car production was cut by 11 hours, and other sectors followed suit. Key idea number two. Great analogies may change society and politics. This may be on your phone, tablet, or laptop. Each has a desktop-based operating system. Early personal computers had complicated operating systems. Only programmers could use computers since they required lines of commands. Apple employee had a solution. He envisaged a workstation with a typewriter, paper, and calculator. He extended the idea to the computer. It could have a screen with everything you needed. This great parallel transformed modern society. It revolutionized personal technology. Great analogies alter the world. Analogies influence politicians' policy choices. Even elite politicians find politics complicated. Analogies can simplify decision-making. In 1954, President Eisenhower struggled to handle the communist invasion of South Vietnam. Admiral Arthur Radford urged for intervention to prevent Southeast Asian countries from succumbing to communism like dominoes. The White House adopted the domino theory and launched two invasions that killed over 2 million people. The analogy failed. Vietnam fell to the communists, but no other dominoes fell and Vietnam became a US ally. Key idea number three, analogies shape our thinking. Have you lost a debate while having better arguments? Analogies often warp arguments, causing this. No analogy is neutral, they're all subjective. Consider the economy ecosystem comparison. It appears simple. Ecosystems are complicated networks of plants, animals, and weather. Businesses and stock exchanges comprise an economy. It's complicated. Unregulated ecosystems. It works fine without outside help. Comparing the economy to an ecosystem implies it should be unregulated by the government. Accepting this parallel hurts your laissez-faire argument. If you agree, you'll appear to think the economy works best alone. Use analogies carefully. They'll shape your perspective. War analogies are powerful but not always in a good manner. A war-torn society is in danger. To win, you may need to use unethical methods. Consider what the war on drugs implies for the US. War reduces problem-solving options. You must resist. Some academics think legalizing soft drugs could help the drug epidemic. In war, how? That's surrendering. Key idea number four. Analogies should be relatable but not cliche. A film character may exclaim, hmm, tastes like chicken, after trying an intriguing new meal. Mmm, tastes like zebra is unlikely. You probably expected this. Zebras wouldn't work. Relevant and comprehensible analogies work. It's strong if people can relate. Bruce Reynolds and his gang spectacularly robbed a postal train north of London in 1963. They fled with $60 million in cash in 20 minutes. Reynolds later called the robbery My Sistine Chapel. His masterpiece, he compared himself to a brilliant artist. The analogy made him even more famous. Even non-Michelangelo fans realize the Sistine Chapel is a masterpiece. Reynolds wouldn't say that was my London sewer system. That's a wonderful engineering and planning feat, but nobody calls it beautiful. They lose potency if comparisons are trivial. Analogy should move people. Some analogies are cliches. Avoid them because they're weaker. Pandora's box, a Greek mythology allegory, has lost its emotional power due to overuse. It won't surprise or change minds. Creative analogies work better. Key idea number five, strong analogies stress similarities over differences. After being lonely for a long, you join an online dating site to find a partner. How do you evaluate profiles? Someone who's comparable to you. 
Analogies work like partners. An analogy must have more similarities than differences. DNA analysis relied on analogies. People disagreed on when to take DNA samples, therefore it was controversial. The fingerprints of the 21st century analogy was used by supporters of police DNA sampling. Indeed, fingerprints and DNA samples can verify and link people to crime scenes. Fingerprinting was groundbreaking like DNA samples. However, they differed significantly. DNA analysis takes weeks and doesn't identify people as well as fingerprints. DNA samples are easier to misappropriate than fingerprints. Naturally, DNA advocates didn't emphasize these disparities while making their argument. They stressed similarities. Successful analogy. It made crime investigation DNA testing as widespread as fingerprinting. Structure mapping aided this analogy. Structure mapping automatically transfers our knowledge. We think we understand DNA testing if we understand fingerprinting. We emphasize similarities and ignore differences. Key idea number six. Good analogies involve abstractions. Have you ever heard a great analogy but weren't sure why? Sometimes we can't explain this feeling, but it's there. Abstraction often strengthens analogies. Connecting seemingly unconnected concepts is abstraction. Our brains excel at abstract cognition. Example, O.J. Simpson was tried for murdering his ex-wife and her partner in 1995. Evidence pointed to his guilt. Even his gloves had DNA from the victims. The gloves were too tight when Simpson tried them on in court. Simpson's defense attorney, John Cochran, utilized a glove analogy to win. Cochran said, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. He meant the trial, not just the gloves. He wanted to convince the jurors that all the evidence was improper. On October 3, 1995, oh, J. Simpson was acquitted. Analogies sometimes require abstraction. Bill Klon used an assembly line analogy. Klon was inspired by the slaughterhouse overhead trolleys that moved animals and carcasses. He saw the slaughter procedure as a series of automatic transfers of carcasses. Cars and animal carcasses are different, but why not? Key idea number seven, a coherent story makes an analogy believable and memorable. Humans hate uncertainty. Unfortunately, we live in a complex, random world. Stories help us handle the constant stream of fresh knowledge. A coherent story explains random information. We can use fate or destiny to explain an unexpected disaster like an accident or crime. Because of brain function, stories are vital. Stories provide the brain a shortcut. A good story has links and causes. It's simpler than a mess of facts. Tell a story to make an analogy memorable. Strangely, omitting information might clarify an analogy. People prefer incomplete stories over incoherent ones. Take economic growth. A rising tide lifts all boats is a common analogy. It implies that any economic growth benefits everyone. It's oversimplified. Economic expansion in one region often causes downfall in another. Despite limited information, the parallel makes logical. More details would make the parallel tougher to remember and understand. Key idea number eight, emotional analogies work best. Are you rational? You're probably proud that you always think rationally. Self-perception is universal. Reason is what distinguishes us from animals. We're not as good at logic as we think. We don't always act rationally. According to Daniel Kahneman, our rational brain typically validates emotional decisions. Emotions tend to rule. Emotional analogies are more convincing than logical ones. In 2005, conservative judge John Roberts, nominated by George W. Bush, gave an emotive example. Liberal senators worried that conservative judges were overstaffing the Supreme Court. Roberts's confirmation hearing was controversial. Judges are like umpires, Roberts defended himself. Umpires enforce the rules. This comparison moved Americans. Baseball is America's pastime and evokes fond memories. Baseball and umpires also evoke tradition and justice. Roberts became Supreme Court Chief Justice when the analogy worked. The analogy's emotional appeal overshadowed its flaws. Unlike umpires, Supreme Court judges established the rules. After his appointment, Roberts did it. He changed corporate campaign financing, which favored conservatives. Roberts's analogy was inaccurate but accomplished his point. Great inventions, political processes, social advancements, and regular discussions all use analogies. They help us understand and persuade us emotionally. Since they're so vital, we must know their pros and cons. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.